JRA 501. I wanted to talk about Indian Point Nuclear Power Plant, which is located just 24 miles north of New York City on the banks of the Hudson River in Westchester County. A large radioactive release triggered by an accident or terrorist attack at the facility could have devastating health and economic consequences, rendering much of the Hudson River Valley and New York City uninhabitable. Due to the plant's vulnerability to terrorism, a laundry list of safety problems, the storage of 1,500 tons of radioactive waste on site, and the lack of a workable evacuation plan, Riverkeeper has been working toward the permanent shutdown of the Indian Point nuclear power plant. So let's look at some issues. Plant safety. Plant operations are a major concern at Indian Point, which has a long history of safety problems. Currently, the plant does not meet more than 100 federal fire safety standards and has suffered serious deterioration, including corroded piping, leaking spent fuel pools, and exploding transformers during its 40-year operating life. Moreover, in the wake of Japan's Fukushima nuclear meltdown, the NRC has rated Indian Point the most earthquake vulnerable nuclear facility in America. Indian Point has one of the largest stockpiles of spent fuel in the U.S. Approximately 1,500 tons of radioactive waste is stored in densely packed pools at Indian Point. No containment structures exist over the spent fuel pools, leaving them vulnerable to sabotage. If Indian Point is relicensed, this was back in 2010, an additional 1,000 tons of highly radioactive waste will be produced and stored at the site indefinitely. Since the 1990s, radioactive contaminants, including highly toxic strontium-90 and cesium-137, as well as tritium, have been leaking from Indian Point's spent fuel pools into the groundwater and the Hudson River. Entergy has no realistic plan to prevent future radioactive leaks from ever-aging and degraded plant components. Decades of accidental leaks have resulted in two large plumes of contamination at the site, which Entergy refuses to remediate. Instead, these toxic radionuclides will continue to leach into the environment and contaminate the Hudson River for decades. They also don't have a very competent emergency preparedness plan. So, let's take a look at something that's going on today. This is an article by Lucas Hickson. Entergy announced on Tuesday that a former supervisor who worked at the Indian Point nuclear power plant north of New York City for 29 years had been arrested for deliberately falsifying critical safety records, and lying to federal regulators last year. The utility said that Daniel Wilson, age 57, who was in charge of ensuring compliance in critical safety areas, falsified tests and records related to the quality of fuel in backup tanks for the emergency diesel generators installed at the nuclear power plant, which are necessary to prevent core damage in the event of the loss of power. Federal charges have been brought against the former employee by the U.S. Attorney's Office, who was released on bail and could sentence up to seven years in prison. He was in charge of ensuring compliance in critical safety areas. And yet he chose to put a minimum of 50 million people in New York in danger of their lives. Not just from something going wrong. And he's only going to get seven years. And he'll probably do less than that. 
Each emergency diesel generator has its own fuel tank called the primary fuel tank and has the ability to take additional fuel from one additional reserve fuel tank on site. The criminal complaint filed against Wilson, who was the chemistry manager at Indian Point between 2007 and 2012, said that the tests of the diesel fuel taken on June 17, 2011 from the reserve fuel tank showed particulate matter concentrations which exceeded NRC limits. Again, on November 18th of the same year, a sample was taken from another primary fuel tank was found to be non-compliant with the NRC limits. And on December 1st of 2011, another sample was taken from the reserve fuel tank that was again in excess of federal safety regulations. A few weeks later, in January and February of 2012, Wilson was questioned by other Indian Point employees while conducting a self-assessment in preparation for an NRC inspection. During the inspection preparations, workers had noted that no condition reports had been created after three tests had shown non-compliance and no additional steps had been taken to correct the problem. After the findings, Wilson logged into the company database under another employee's name and fabricated test data for resample tests which were never actually taken. On February 6, the defendant filed three falsified test results in the official plant record database which had purportedly been sampled within two weeks of the three samples which had been found in excess of federal regulations. After being questioned by his co-workers about the lack of documentation, Wilson created a condition report which the Nuclear Regulatory Commission regularly relies upon for inspecting nuclear power stations for safety which gave additional false information and explanations for the lack of supporting documentation for the test results which he lied about. He then claimed to have conducted additional tests on the fuel in-house, but further investigations found that at the time Indian Point did not have any in-house procedures in place for testing the particulate matter concentrations. And according to the documents, Wilson later admitted his guilt to the NRC officials but claimed that he had fabricated the test results in order that Indian Point would not be forced to shut down. Wilson is charged with fabricating resample tests which were used to argue that the fuel was within federal regulations and lying to other employees about the matter. So At what point do you back off from people who are paying you mega dollars? At what point do you grow a heart, uh, look at your grandchildren in the eyes, and realize that you could kill them, kill everybody you love? and that wouldn't matter? Wow, this is just frightening. This is frightening. Because we all know this, maybe not to this degree, but this kind of stuff goes on daily. There, you know, it's just part of the industry. And of course, leave it to the co-workers to have to bust this guy. Not the NRC, because they are really the no regulatory con mission. In a press release, U.S. Attorney Preet Bharar stated any alleged deliberate misconduct at a facility like Indian Point is a matter of grave concern to the office. Well, no kidding. One need look no further than recent natural disasters to know that an important facility's backup generators and other systems must be maintained in working order because in an emergency, they may be critical. 
While Entergy has claimed that the findings were discovered by employees at the nuclear power plant, they were really found during the period while workers were preparing for a pending NRC inspection, when they knew that federal regulators would want to look at the diesel fuel due to the 2011 findings. During those preparations, Indian Point workers were unable to locate the necessary documentation for the resampling because resampling had never actually been done. So, still, the employees were the ones that busted him. What actually happened at Indian Point was that for a matter of months, the nuclear power plant continued to operate in a condition where its diesel generators were not in technical compliance with NRC standards. Had the NRC known about the lack of compliance, or had they been compliant with their own laws and regulations, maybe they would have found out. And they would have sooner than later shut down the nuclear power station. Okay. Yes, because of course a million dollars a day is a lot of money to lose. So, you know, a million dollars or a million people. Let's roll the dice here. Uh, according to regulations, the Nuclear Regulatory Con Mission could fine the licensee $140,000 per day that the nuclear power plant operated while not in compliance. Well, whatever. Okay. This is just another day in the life of nuclear energy in the United States. As always, God bless. <laughs>